hips. Warble like swans and the ankle bells on your lotus like feet buzz like bees. Please cool me off with the effulgence of your own ras. Shri Radha goes out to meet Shri Krishna. Shripad's mind dwells in the kingdom of transcendental pastimes as he witnesses Dada's rendezvous in his Siddha Swarup. He, she, quickly dresses Swamini properly before she rushes out. It is the service of Prem Pagalini Radha, who is mad with love for Krishna. In his Sita Svarup, so we can see that it is only possible to witness the pastimes if we become a viewer. That means in our Manjari Svarup, we have access to the Kunja. And therefore, we have to come out of the concept of being the doer, because being the doer means we are in our male consciousness. And to be into our female consciousness, in our Manjari Swarup, we are becoming <clears throat> viewer. So if we can be viewing this, then we are relishing the rasa. Therefore, it is very important to cultivate our spiritual body and have no other desire than to please the divine couple. If any selfish desire is there, desire for sense gratification, identification with this material body, then we cannot be in our Swarup. And here is beautifully described in his Siddha Swarup. He is witnessing this. And being part of the Leela. While speaking sweetly about Krishna, Shripad dresses and ornaments Srimati properly. If Swamini would do it herself, everything would turn out upside down. She would hang her sash of bells on her neck her necklace on her ankles and her ankle bells on her waist. And she would smear her eyeliner 
on her foot soles and her foot lac around her eyes. Because Radharani, she is so much in this loving affair, she could not think about anything else, about meeting her Krishna, that she would she cannot concentrate on how to decorate herself. Therefore, everything is turned upside down. Therefore, she needs the manjaris. They are very calm because they have no desire to meet Krishna. They only desire is to prepare their Swamini as nicely as possible so that she can meet her Krishna. And in particular, here is very nice, we can see what the seva of Sripad in his Manjari Swarup is, that uh, she is decorating her very nicely because the Manjaris, they are not agitated as Radharani is, they can stay very calm and do the needful decorator nicely, better nicely prepare her very nicely so that she is very much perfect for meeting her Krishna. And she by herself, she cannot do because the agitation is too much. Part of the Mandiri Seva is also telling stories, reminding, reminding uh, Swamini of the pastimes from before. I think we saw this theme yesterday and we've seen it before. The Mandiris are kind of like a material memory a record of the pastimes. Yeah, yesterday she was, she thought was singing, calming Radha. And she's singing back and telling back the stories that Radha has taught her. And that's what motivates her, what gives her the passion to, to, Go out and meet Krishna. So, like here, to, just like you're saying, um, and yesterday as well, Swamini is kind of at the edge of her consciousness. Yesterday, in the verse, she was stunned and astonished, couldn't do anything. And here it's the same way. But the soothing, Speaking of Sripad reminds her of her goal. And then we find out the cause. Ananda Das Babaji goes on, says, How sweetly Krishna calls Radha with flute playing. How long can Srimati still remain calm? She loses her patience and says, Oh, Saki, what misery. My body is filled with the poison coming out of Krishna's flute. This sound forces itself into my ears. making the bashfulness in my body and mind melt. 
and the hairs on my body stand on end. Now Srimati says, the poison who is coming out on Krishna's flute, although it is the pure nectar who is coming out of Krishna's flute, but because it makes her restless and she cannot stay calm anymore and all this ecstasy is coming, then she is saying that for her it is like a poison, but instead it is very nectar who is coming out of the food. And it makes the bashfulness in her body and mind disappear. Ordinarily, Shimati is very shy. Actually, nobody can stay calm when they are hearing. Krishna's flute, except the manjaris, because they have no desire to meet Krishna. Only they can stay calm. As we said also, also the other day, the manjaris uh, for them, they have only one thing in mind, it's the exclusive service for Srimati Kas Lotus Feet. That is, all their life and soul is concentrated upon that. Therefore, Radharani can keep them very close by in every situation within the Kunja. Also, when she is meeting with Krishna, the only ones who can be there are the Manjaris. No one else can be there. I think it's also a symptom of the separation that when she separated from from her moan, then she is confused, then she's stunned. We cannot hear. Well, we cannot hear you. Nothing. Switched off something. Brother Rada? Your sound is fine. Can you hear us? Brother, we couldn't hear you. How is it now? Okay. Maybe a uh, uh, change. Shall I change the microphone? Do oh. you hear me? No, no, we oh. understand you. Yeah, it's... We can hear nicely with the prob no problem. How about you in temple there? Okay? Yeah, we yeah. hear you. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Maybe I turned my head the wrong way. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, I was saying that it's this confusion um, 
or if you like, this poison is a symptom of the separation. The love and separation that Radha experiences and that we all experience, which is the foundation experience of bhakti. We're all living a relationship to, to Radha and therefore to Krishna. And this relationship is always one of distance, no matter how close and intimate it might be. And Radha is the model for this. Radha is the highest lover. She's the one who has Prem flowing through her. And she's got her Mohan right next door. She, he's so close she can hear the flute. But the separation is making her crazy. Confused. And like you said, it feels like poison. So this pain of separation is our poison. Longing to be close to Radha. And it's constant. We're always longing. We're always wanting. We're always desiring. It's the it's the lifeblood of our, of our souls. This longing, this wanting, this being greedy and eager and wanting more and not having enough. Yeah, because actually spirituality is, uh, and also the chanting, it's insatiable because it's spiritual. So all this nice nectarian pastimes are meant to increase our sacred greed and longing for it this is the love in separation it's mm. even higher than the meeting because it keeps us greedy for that so that we doesn't stop endeavoring and doing more to get there. Like we can see also in the Vilapa Kusumanjali, when Raghunath Das Goswami, Rati Manjari, when the vision disappears, then Raghunath Das Goswami is very desperate, crying and weeping because the vision disappears and he wanted to be there. So this is a perfect example showing us how that we should perform our bhajan. And Guru say, uh, Gurudev says that this is a, a very normal thing because we have a material body, we are marginal energy. So we cannot be always there, otherwise we have to leave our material body so that we a vision can come and we can be there, but that we come back and fall out of it, it's like a normal thing, because we have this material body to increase our sacred greed. This is actually in our present situation in the material world and in this Sadak Deha, it is uh, a very favorable situation for increasing our bhajan and make more realizations. That is how we should use our body as a matter of doing more and more realizations and mm. making the progress that is needed so that ultimately we can be in the spiritual world.
Imagine what would happen if we were suddenly satisfied, utterly, completely satisfied. It would be the end. It would be the end of everything. <laughs> and same, the same with Radha. She's never satisfied either. She's always longing. Longing and then union. Longing and then union. Eight times a day, forever and ever and ever. Yeah, it's never ending. Hey. This is the meaning of eternal. Eternity is never ending. It has no beginning and no end. It's eternal. And the separation is always there. We never know what it's like when when the Radha is together with Mohan. We never read about this. We only read about the longing. But the unity with Mohan is what drives her. And the unity with our Swamini, the feeling of it is what drives us, gives us our greed, like you're saying. Oh, Saki, what misery! My body is filled with the poison coming out of Krishna's flute. This sound forces itself into my ears, making the bashfulness in my body and mind melt and the hairs on my body stand on end. And then Babaji tells, while Srimati speaks, her voice, voice gets choked, and she becomes very unsteady out of desire to soothe her heart with the sight of Krishna, the enchanting flute player. Seeing this, Shripad in his Inkari form says, O Radike, no one knows how to worship Krishna like you. Make your name Radhika useful by fulfilling the desires that Krishna so clearly expresses with the tune of his flute. What is the need of any further delay? Quickly go out to meet him. The desire then, so the desire is coming from the flute. The desire that she has comes from him, is caused by him. Her goal is to love him.
and to fulfill his desire. And she's the highest. No one knows like her how to how to please Krishna, how to please Mohan. Make your name Radhika useful. The word Radha has a, at its origin the word Radha, which means to worship. I think that's what he's referring to. Mm. Actually, every Manjari has a very personal relationship with Swami. So, individuality means that each and every one of us has a particular individual relationship. It's like a unique relationship. And in this case, this Manjari is now encouraging Swami, now go and meet your Krishna. She can feel exactly her distress that she has now, that she should go. She said, go, go meet your Krishna now, because the Manjaris are so much connected with Swamini that they feel exactly what she feels. So, also without speaking, only by looking at each other, they know what is the needful to do. And here, she is showing us how much connected that she is with Swami. That at this point, now she is encouraging her go meet your Krishna. And like that, every one of us, at the time that we have realized our Siddha Swarup, every one of us has also her particular. Seva within the Kunja, and there we are guided by our Guru Manjari. Like here, we are guided by our Gurudev, how to get there. So, Guru means that he is navigating us to the goal, he's helping us to reach the goal. That is the great mercy and the beauty of Gurudev. So we should have appreciation for that. And this will not end if we have once realized our spiritual form. It will continue in the spiritual world as our Guru Manjari. She is guiding us there to But to get there on our side is very much important that we have that desire. Desire is the most important thing. Like by desire, we came to this material world. And by desire, we can leave this material world. So it's up to us what we do and what we not do. In the Shastra is always mentioned that we should do this, we should do that, because ultimately it's our own decision what we are doing and what we are not doing, or what we want to do. So it is on our side to decide what we want and what we not want, in which direction we want to go what we will accept and what we will not accept. It is also mentioned that a devotee is accepting everything what is favorable and rejecting everything 
which is unfavorable on the path of bhakti. So we have to distinguish, like Srila Prabhupada also many times says, we should take shelter at the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master. So that means that the disciple has to distinguish who is bona fide or what is bona fide and what is unbona fide. So we have to be very careful with our desires, especially when we are chanting. Harinam is fulfilling the desire of the devotee. So we should chant with the proper desire and with the proper goal. It's mysterious what Sripad is experiencing there. She feels and understands the needs and the desires of Radha, but she does not feel the effect of the flute. She feels, she understands Radha's desire, but she doesn't feel the, the actual desire for Mohan. She's not touched by the flute, by the poison. She doesn't melt. She doesn't faint. She doesn't feel astonishment. But at the same time, she understands. So when she says to Radha, make your name Radhika useful by fulfilling the desire of Krishna, of Mohan, She's showing that she understands the purpose of Radha, that her purpose is to fulfill one. And she rem reminds Radha of what her purpose is. Radha is nowhere in thought. Radha is only in feeling. But the Manjari has this realization. You see, this is the difference between Manjari Bhav and Gopi Bhav. The Gopis, they want also to meet Krishna. There is a desire to be with Krishna. And Manjari Bhav has no desire to meet Krishna. No, Manjari but nobody, nobody here has Gopi Bhav. Huh? Who has Gopi Bhav? The Gopis. Yeah, but the... the but uh, Sripad is in Manjari Bhav, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, Sripad is in Manjari Bhav. I'm telling you only the difference between the Manjaris and the Gopis, because the Manjaris have no desire to meet with Krishna, therefore they are not affected by the flute playing, as you said. They have not the same, like Radharani, she wants to meet Krishna, therefore the flute playing has an effect on her and also on the Gopis because they want to meet Krishna too, but it has no effect on the Manjaris, because they are in Manjari Bhav. They only want that, that their Swamini is meeting Krishna, but they themselves, they don't have that desire. So Shrimat is, Shripad is still speaking and says, Your buttocks reveal so many amorous pastimes. You will not be able to proceed quickly with these large buttocks. buttocks? Therefore, 
What means buttocks? The the ass. Aha. Ah, okay. Therefore, I say, hurry up. If you walk slowly, the bells on your sash will sing like the swans on the bank of the Yamuna and will announce the presence of Cupid. From Gita Govinda, then Krishna will be astonished when he hears the bells jingling on your large buttocks. Then from Govinda Lilamanita, the words of the poets that Sri Radha's buttocks are like the bank of the Yamuna are true. Because her braid from her hair that reaches down to her buttocks is like the black Yamuna river. Her buttocks are its banks, and the sash of bells around her buttocks are the swans. If not, then why can the king of dancers, Hari's mind, that dances the rasa, there with the dancing girls of his desires, never grow tired of dancing. So her bottom is very large, and then the, there are many bells around, the sash of bells around, which are making sounds like the swans. And her braid of hair is the falling down her back is the Yamuna River. And this in the Rasa Lila is what makes him Krishna want to dance. You see, this is a love affair, but it's a transcendental love affair. That means that has nothing to do with the love affairs within this material world. It's a love, loving exchange. And this we can understand only with our heart. Only then when we can give up material desires and if we are coming away with the identification with our material body and everything what is related to the body, it's a spiritual thing. This is happening in the spiritual world. And we should not forget that they have not material bodies. So it's a transcendental love affair.
and this we can only this can only be relished if we have an eternal if we are in our eternal spiritual body this we cannot understand with our material senses or being on a material platform therefore it's very important that we are becoming practicing devotees and do our daily practice because without endeavor on our side and without the proper desire it is not coming automatically so we have to go in the right direction and longing for this praying for this because only by mercy of the of Gurudev and our Acharyas we can get there this bhakti path is a mercy path so we are dependent on the mercy of the sadhus and the mercy of, of Gurudev we can do the endeavor but we should not think that uh, the result of getting the vision or getting there is only because our own endeavor it's because of the mercy who comes from Gurudev he sees if he sees uh, that the disciple is really endeavoring and longing and it's becoming our real heartfelt desire to get there The maidservant says, How sweetly you go on your rendezvous. How sweetly your ankle bells are jingling while you walk on. They sound just like the humming of bumblebees that follow your lotus-like feet being attracted to their fragrance and their honey. Bumblebees are following your lotus feet greedy for their honey and after you placed your charming footprint somewhere they will come to kiss the earth. The Shripad finds the sweetness just in the very fact that she's walking toward her Mohan. just knowing that she's on the way to the meeting and the sound of her walking is the sound of the happiness of Namantari and it's also the pleasure of Mohan who's represented by the bumblebee He wants to taste her honey, the nectar. And even where she steps on the ground, then the bumblebee wants to come and kiss the earth. In this way, the manjaris are pleasing both. 
they are serving Radharani so nicely, but therefore, because Radharani is made, prepared so nicely, and Krishna, if he meets with her, is so much satisfied by her appearance, that he is also very pleased by the service that the Manjari did. So, like this, we are pleasing both in our Manjari Seva. We are pleasing Radharani directly, and we are, because of doing that, indirectly, Krishna is also pleased. O Shri Radhike, soothe your afflicted heart with the cooling splendor of Shri Krishna, who is Ras personified and who shines like a fresh rain cloud Svaras Chatabhi means the effulgence of Krishna the rain cloud of Ras itself means the effulgence of Krishna effulgence so the shining beauty Svaras Chatabhi then means the effulgence of Krishna, who is yours, Sva, and who is Ras himself. Or another meaning of Svaras Chahadabhi, another meaning can be, O Rade, please cool Krishna whose heart is afflicted. Off with your own sweet ras. Or again, please cool off the afflicted heart of this poor maid servant with the splendid ras of the vision of your meeting with Shamasundra. Cool off my ears with the sound of your jingling bells. My eyes with the sight of your beautiful buttocks. My tongue by making me glorify the sweetness of your rendezvous. My nose with the smell of your lotus feet that are followed by buzzing bumblebees, and my skin with the cooling touch of these lotus feet. So in all these experiences, there's cooling. The desire is burning, and the meeting will cool it. This is how the Manjari's satisfaction is, if they can view this, only by viewing this and getting the energy from the scene, the impression, it's having that effect on them, all in these particular details. So the Manjari's are viewing they are not doing, they are completely in their Manjari Bhav, in their Manjari Swarup as a female. 
that is how we should become and what it should be cultivated on our side. Therefore, all these detailed descriptions are there so that we can become a picture of what's happening and of the feeling. This is all about feelings by the different impressions that these manjaris have, the different feelings that the impressions are generating in them, are very detailed description of that, so that we can get an idea of these feelings and how it feels like to be there and to view the scene What Ananda Das Babaji is saying, though, is that because of the formula, because of the language, it's impossible to tell who's being cooled. It's possible that it's Radha. It's possible that it's Mohan, and it's possible that it's Manjari, that it's Shripad. So that when this meeting finally takes place, then everyone is cooled. Like you say, then the mission of Mandari is fulfilled, and she has happiness, and Radha has happening, happiness. <clears throat> when Yugalaki Shore is taking place, then the universe is cooled. Yeah. Everything in the world is cooled down. And this cooling means also to cool the heat of our mind. So our mind is always agitated with many, or is agitating us with many material things. And uh, to go in, into these leelas, we can cool the mind with the nectar of the leela. Because the mind it's not our enemy, we should make the mind our friend, that the mind is helping us to get there. And if the mind is cooled down by viewing the Leela, then it becomes peaceful and it's helping us in our bhajan. Mm. <laughs> That's very nice, very nice thought. The overheating mind. Yeah. And now, Ananda Das Babaji is going to complete the commentary. He says, These prayers are so sweet. because they are made during absorption in the Siddha Sarup. Wow. So very often in Radharasa Sudhaniti and in Vilapa Kusmanjari, it's when Shripad or Raghunathas is outside of Siddha Sarup that he prays. And then he prays, please let me see you again. Please let me go back. Let, please let me come with you. But Babaji is saying, this one is so sweet because it's an observation in the spiritual platform. Mm. And that's why the feelings of Sripad Manjari are so close to, to Radha's. It's a bit like what you're saying. Mm. Everything is cooled down. Everything is made satisfactory. 
Yeah, and we should know that these are the most intimate realizations of them presented to us. So how we should pray or what the prayer should be like, they're presenting us their most intimate realizations out of their visions, out of being there, witnessing, viewing that, to increase our sacred greed to go there, and how to sweetly pray to Radharani and to Gurudev, that they help us to get there. It's the most intimate thing, both this Radharasa Sudhanidhi and Vilapa Kusumanjali. It's very intimate. So now Babaji will answer to what you just said. <laughs> mm -hmm. The practicing devotee will also experience all this by Shibimati's grace. By Radha Kipa. Yeah. There is nothing sweeter in than this in the whole world. There is nothing sweeter than this in the whole world. And it makes the devotee think he is directly in Srimati's company. Jai. It's a beautiful gift. We're not in Srimati's company, but since Sripad is telling us, talking to us from the spiritual plane, yeah. we can feel very, very close. There is nothing sweeter than this. Nothing yes. sweeter than be in our Manjari Swarup. It's not, you cannot compare this to anything in the material world. Because what is the sweetness of the material world is sense gratification. But at some point you have enough. You are satiated. But in the spirituality is insatiable. So therefore, he says, there is nothing sweeter than this because, because it is never ending. Hmm. It's increasing and increasing to an unlimited extent. It's unlimited. And in the material world, everything is limited. Also, our existence being in this material body is limited. At one time, in, at one point in time, we have to give up this material body. But our spiritual body is eternal. And that is our constitutional position as an eternal living entity, as an eternal spiritual soul. Constitutional position means that that is what we are supposed to be. And it's unnatural for the soul being within a material body who has to take birth and has to die because the soul is eternal. So the soul is not born and it doesn't die. So now we are in an unnatural state at the moment, but we can do the best out of it to take advantage of this beautiful culture and use our body as our sadhak deha to perform spiritual activities, to perform loving devotional service, to go into the devotional thing instead of working for our own sense gratification and be fruitive workers. That is not what we want to be. And to do so, it's very important and very essential that we can surrender ourselves to the lotus feet of Sri Guru. Without surrendering, we cannot have the right attitude to perform spiritual life, real spiritual life, and to perform real devotional service, which is a loving. So we have to be loving. 
we have to go into the love because this Radharasa Sudanisi, all this what we heard today, it's all in pure love. It has nothing to do with any material concept. Sri Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Good morning. So, thank you for beautiful reading and sharing. Now we are diving this paragraph. It's actually this. It's before Gurudev said this paragraph is underlined. And then now, uh, by his mercy, he's there. I would like to ask Gurudev why this is uh, important of this sentences. I'm so, so foolish, I forgot his uh, explanation. <laughs> Good day. Could you explain again about this point by your lotus feet? A lotus mouth, good day. What again, read? Good day, maybe. Thank you, good day, and all. These prayers are so sweet because they are made during absorption in the Siddha Swarup. The practicing, the practicing devotees also experience all this by Srimati's grace. There is nothing sweeter than this in the whole world. And it makes the devotee think he is directly in Sri Mati's company. His attachment to material life will decrease and his remembrance will gradually become more intense. That's the point. We are forced to do the decrease the material life. This we don't need to do. We don't need to do this effort. We have to do the efforts to more intensive thinking of Radhika. And there is a uh, before some lines are there. Read that. Um. O Sri Radhike, soothe your afflicted heart with the cooling splendor of Sri Krishna. You see, who is Radhika, Radhika is burning heart for Krishna. Mm -hmm. Missing, that is burning. Radhika. Uh, When Krishna. it goes, when mm -hmm. it goes, when she meets with Krishna, then this cooling heart. If not meeting, is a burning heart. Hmm. Just now, he explain about. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. And go then that. The, yeah, go. I go on. Uh, Krishna, who is Rasa personified and who shines like a fresh rain cloud. Svaras mm. Chatabihi. This means also the effulgence of Krishna, <coughs> who is yours, Sva, and who yeah. is Rasa himself. Mm. Another meaning can be, O Radhe, please cool Krishna. 
<laughs> his heart is afflicted with your own sweet rasa. <laughs> and then a third meaning, again another meaning, is please cool off the afflicted heart of this poor maidservant. Yeah. With the splendid rasa of the vision of your meeting with Shamsundra. <coughs> all they are off. burning. Mm. All their hearts are burning. Then they want cooling now. Mm. And that burning is a devotion. <coughs> So Manjari cool heart when Radha and Krishna meet. And Radhika heart cool when he meets, she meet with Krishna. And Krishna heart cool when Krishna meet with Radhika. So all the, the three, they so intense love each other. They, that is devotion. Mm. That is the highest love. When we are burning for in separation, they are not separated, but the moment they think they start feeling this separation. They are not far, but they are very close. But they feel like this burning. Mm. And Manjari is also feel like this if she is not in service mode. Not with Samni. Her heart is burning, not with Samni. She is missing Samni. The material influence affected to the Manjari. Yeah. Cool off my ears with the sound of your jingling bells. Uh -huh. My eyes with the sight <coughs> of your beautiful buttocks. My tongue, by making me glorify the sweetness of your rendezvous. My nose, with the smell of your lotus feet that are followed by buzzing bumblebees. And my skin, with the cooling touch of these lotus feet. Yeah. Everything's burning with the separation. Wow. And then Babaji explains, these prayers are so sweet because they are made during absorption in the Sita Swarup. Yeah, that is the beauty of Sita Swarup. When we are not in Siddha Saru, then it's burning. Mm. So we, we desire only to be in Siddha Saru for that time. Huh? Mm. The practicing devotees will also experience all this by Srimati's grace. <laughs> there is nothing sweeter than this in the whole world. Tina is there? If you want long neck, if you want soft. Is it up or down? But 
and it makes the devotee think he is directly in Srimati's company. His, his attachment to material life will decrease and its remembrance will gradually become more intense. Slowly, another revelation will be shared to him. The stream of transcendental visions flows on without interruption. Oh, Vinodini. Why are you standing there? Quickly, proceed on the pathways of Radha. No, this one, this one. Oh, jewel-like lover of Krishna, hearing these words yeah. of your maidservants, quickly go to give yourself to Govinda. Sukha da surata rangi nitamba bhagate kanchi Kala hamsha gana kala nade Dum manjula manjari Shinjita sumadura Aramarago <laughs> the sash of the bells on your buttocks gives great joy during your amorous sports. Warbling like swans, and your elegant ankle belts jingle sweetly like humming bees that follow your lotus feet. Jolite, Jolite, Dhani, Sara, Sacha, Taya, Tumi, Shita, La, Koro, E, Dine, Vipa, Mai, He, Radike, Suki, Koro, E, Darshike, E, Rasa, Prabodhananda, Bane, O oh, Radhe, pull off this poor maidservant while you walk with your splendid Rath. Rabudananda says, O oh, merciful Radhike, make your maidservant happy with this Rath. This ends the nectar commentary of verse. Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Shri Radhe. He's not saying anything. He's blind. Ah, Guru Dev, you are muted. Yeah. Ah, okay. We hear. Uh, 
श्री राधे श्री राधे थैंक यू वेरी नाइस थैंक यू वेरी मच सर आल्सो सो गुड थैंक यू बंगला वेरी नाइस श्री राधे धन्यवाद वेरी नाइस धन्यवाद वेल Radhe Radhe thank you so much Danda Prabhu thank you how is Danda Prabhu good very good we don't yeah. need to go sachari wow well. only 10 yeah. days we should uh, keep medicine i see and and uh, every time i'm cooking for him but he very needs very nice very good And Because how is Jananda Maharaj? Today he has a sangha with devotees. Wow, so good. Yeah, so love is everywhere by your mercy, rather. Yeah, than... oh, <laughs> so good. So how is Brinda Van Guru Dev now? So nice, so beautiful. Any good news, Guru Dev? Ah, Sadhvi has a baby. <coughs> Jai. Very sweet baby. Ram, Kripa, Rose. Jai Ho. Same day of Ram appearance. Temple appears so that uh, Ram Kripa rose. Ram Kripa Radha Mohan Kripa, like a soft and beautiful smell of rose flower. Who said, Radha Radha? Perfect auspicious. Jai Jai Sri Radha. जय जय श्री राम श्री राधे